This is part 3 of our turtle dissection series. If you haven't yet, check out parts 1 and 2 right here. After the stomach, the partially digested food passes into the small intestine. So the small intestine is all of this right here. The small intestine is very long and functions in absorbing nutrients from the turtle's food. The intestines also have scaffolding to keep them in place, as you can see when I try to pull apart the intestines. And this scaffolding or film is called the mesentery tissue. The mesentery also has blood vessels running through it that supplies the intestines with blood. Now I'm going to cut open a segment of the small intestine to see the inside. You can see the small intestine also has a lot of these little folds that function in increasing the surface area for better absorption. After passing through the small intestine, the partially digested food enters the large intestine, which is right here, and you can see the diameter becomes much larger. The large intestine is where excess water from the food is absorbed, and feces is made and stored until it can be eliminated through the cloaca. And you can see that the large intestine runs all the way down the turtle's body, and connects to the cloaca. Another notable organ is the pancreas, right here, which also helps in digestion. It secretes digestive enzymes that help further break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So now, going back to the respiratory system, let's find the lungs. So these are the lungs on either side, and as you can see, they're inflated. In turtles, the lungs are thin and attached to the carapace. Turtles can't breathe like we do. Breathe in and out and feel your ribcage expand and contract with your breath. Turtles can't do that because their ribcage is now their shell. Instead, turtles breathe through moving their limbs and necks. These lungs are responsible for exchanging gases, taking in oxygen and eliminating carbon dioxide. The lungs in a turtle have many small air sacs called alveoli that increase the surface area for better gas exchange. Looking closely, you can also see this honeycomb-like structure through the lungs that also functions to increase surface area for gas exchange. So I've taken out one of the turtle's lung, and you can see here is where the bronchi leads into the lung. And then inside the lung, you can again see this really cool honeycomb-like structure. And if you can't really tell through the video, the lungs also feel very spongy to the touch. So here I've taken out the other lung, and again we can see the bronchi, and you can see this lung is partially inflated. Kind of feels like a balloon.
A fun fact is that turtles can also breathe through a different area in their body, the cloaca. Let me explain why. One challenge that turtles face is winter time. Since turtles are cold-blooded, or ectothermic, their body temperature is mostly dependent on the temperature of their environment. In contrast, our body temperature is relatively consistent since we produce the heat ourselves through our metabolism. Since we can produce our own heat, we're fine during the winter. But for turtles, winter becomes a big problem because their body temperature drops significantly. Turtles survive through winter using a process called brumation, which is similar to hibernation, but not exactly the same. Unlike in hibernation, during brumation, the turtle is still conscious and not asleep. It's just slowing its body processes down in order to conserve energy. The turtle's heart rate and breathing rate decreases, and it barely moves. But even then, turtles can't survive freezing temperatures. So many turtles go into water to brumate, where the temperature doesn't drop below freezing. The only problem here is that there's usually a thick layer of ice above the water, and now the turtle isn't able to come up for air. So to get enough oxygen into their bodies without using their lungs, turtles use their cloaca. The cloaca has a lot of blood vessels running through it, just like the lungs, so it's effective at absorbing the minimal oxygen the turtle needs during brumation. Another technique some turtles use is to entirely switch to anaerobic respiration, which doesn't require oxygen. However, this method of respiration results in dangerous amounts of acid building up in the turtle's system. These turtles neutralize the acid with the calcium from their shells. Just like how we take calcium-derived antacids for heartburn. And as a reminder, here is the cloaca that we talked about before. This opening. Now let's take a look at the reproductive system. This is a female turtle, so you can see the ovary here, and the eggs attached. There is the same on the other side. We can see the ovary, and all the way down, we can see the eggs attached as well. Right there. Turtles have internal fertilization, which means the eggs are fertilized in the female turtle's reproductive tract by the sperm. After fertilization, the female lays the eggs in a nest. Sea turtles will actually migrate long distances to return to the beach where they were hatched to lay their own eggs, similar to what salmon do. Once the baby sea turtles hatch, they look like miniature adults. Moving on to the excretory system. The excretory system functions in maintaining the balance of fluids and removing metabolic waste products from the turtle's body. First, here's the kidney, right here. This small, gray, bean-like structure. And there's an equivalent kidney on the other side. These kidneys filter the blood to make urine. Then, the urine travels down ducts called ureters to the urinary bladder, which you can see is this balloon-like structure right here. And from this bladder, the urine is excreted through the cloaca, which again is down here. Finally, with all the internal organs out of the way, let's take a look at the spine and ribs. You can see here that the vertebra 
runs down the midline of the shell, and the modified ribs are fused to the vertebra and to each other to form the shell. So each of this is a modified rib that leads out into this flattened shape and is fused to each other to form the shell. Turtles are renowned for their longevity, with several species living well over a hundred years. They have become living symbols of resilience and endurance, and rightfully so, as they have survived on this planet for over 200 million years. But unfortunately, turtles face numerous threats in the modern world. Habitat loss, pollution, climate change, and poaching have taken a toll on turtle populations worldwide. Conservation efforts are crucial to ensure their survival and to protect these extraordinary creatures for generations to come. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't yet, check out parts 1 and 2 of our turtle dissection series.